I'm not starting. <laughs> I'm finna leave. I was so checked out. Like, <laughs> it's over. I already talked to VJ. Pat, like, hey, bro, come get me. McCole Hardman may have accidentally initiated an NFL investigation on the Kansas City Chiefs for tampering. Or at least, that's what some around the league think based on Hardman's recent comments in a podcast. They are going to look into filing tampering charges. And in this video, I'm gonna dive into the situation and see if there's really something the league could punish the Chiefs for in regards to a fine draft picks or more. But first, how about those? <laughs> All right, Chiefs wide receiver McCole Hardman has found himself in some hot water, to some at least, after comments he made was taken to mean the Chiefs could have potentially been tampering by having conversations with him before trading for him last season. And before we get into that, here's the context and what was said. He was very recently on Ryan Clark's podcast, The Pivot, and had an in-depth, candid conversation with them about a ton of things, really. His injury in 2022 when he wound up in the hospital unable to walk, his decision of signing with the Jets and what it was like over there, then what it was like to come back to KC and catch the Super Bowl ending touchdown. Well, in that conversation, McColl made it clear that he did not enjoy his time with the Jets one bit. I hate talking about the Jets because they, I'm telling you, they didn't make me so mad, bro. And he goes on to detail that it was unorganized over there with players lacking discipline and after Aaron Rodgers got hurt week one they were all basically lost. He also detailed his interactions with the special teams coordinator Brant Boyer and how they weren't the best at times. At one point Boyer communicated that McColl wasn't going to be the starting returner because he didn't trust him back there. So when Xavier Gibson the starting returner tweaked his ankle the week of the Chiefs game. Fast forward to the Chiefs game. They get hurt on a Wednesday or something. So as a coach if you are Storm the turn and get hurt. You like, hey, listen, I might need you this game. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, Zay hurt or whatever. I didn't get talked to him Thursday, Friday, or Saturday. I not have not one word to this man. There was no communication to McColl all week, and right before the game started, the special teams coordinator came up to him and said, now, Hey, I need you to be the star returner this game. I said, No. I'm not, I'm not returning punts for you, bro. I'm talking about I'm gonna remember it. What you gonna do, bro? I'm not starting. <laughs> I'm finna leave. So what what the worst can you do to me? And that's where McColl went on to say the guy didn't trust him back there anyway, which is why he said, nah, I'm good. Then followed up by saying this. For that man, bro, I'm not playing for him, like at all. I wouldn't even do it. I was so checked out. Like, <laughs> it's over. I already talked to VJ. Pat, like, hey, bro, come get me, bro. Like, what are y'all doing? Like, what are we talking about? Like, man, come get me. And this is where some people were like, hold up, did he just say what I think he did? I was so checked out. Like, <laughs> it's over. I already talked to VJ. Pat, like, hey, bro, come get me. McColl also made some other interesting statements throughout, almost hinting at the fact that he knew he was on his way out. What you gonna do, bro? I'm not starting. <laughs> I'm finna leave. Once I got that feeling that KC wanted me back and and them actually trading for me back meant a lot because I felt like they really valued me in a sense. And then obviously Pat telling me, like, man, I love how you back and Trav and, you know, all those guys. These comments made it seem like McColl may have known in advance that somebody, maybe the Chiefs, could be trading for him prior to the deadline. And that's why some are making the case that McColl might have reached out to Mahomes and Brett Veach in improper fashion, initiating conversation in a borderline illegal way, i.e., tampering. Well, talking with former teammates, I believe, is fine, but talking with staff of another team about business matters is a bit more complex because you aren't supposed to do that without your current team's permission, and that's the part others seem more bothered about. Jason from Over the Cap said, quote, the part about talking to Casey's GM while under contract should be looked at if there was no permission. If McColl Hardman did indeed reach out to Veach, Veach would then be obligated per the league rules to immediately report such contact to the owner or operating head of the club that holds the player's rights. So if this did happen, McColl talking with Veach without proper permission and Veach did not not report this, this could be bad news for the Kansas City Chiefs. The degree of bad news still remains to potentially be seen. There are extreme cases of tampering that have involved teams losing multiple draft picks, fines, and owners even being suspended. The owner of the Miami Dolphins suspended today and fined one and a half million dollars. The Chiefs themselves were actually fined and lost two draft picks back in 2016, a third round pick from that year, and a sixth round pick for the 2017 draft for having contact with wide receiver Jeremy Macklin before the start 
part of that year's free agent signing period. With that being said, I would think the Chiefs learned their lesson from that and chose to go above board all the way with McCole Hardman. But because of these comments he made on the podcast, it's worth diving into this a little deeper. Let's look at the timeline of all this. The trade deadline was October 31st. And on October 1st, the Jets played the Chiefs in their week four matchup with the incident going down about McColl not wanting to return punts that day as he was already checked out telling Veach and Mahomes to come get him. Then on October 10th, it was announced that the Jets are looking at options for McColl Hardman, including a potential trade. But two days later, McColl was asked about this report on October 12th, and he basically said this was all new news to him. The news broke of the something about shopping around, whatever. The first time I heard the news yesterday or two days ago, whenever it broke, so this first time I, I'm hearing it. So I guess, you know, maybe they've been talking or going back and forth, or maybe the front office been doing what they've been doing. But other than that, I'm just here practicing. Then when asked if he'd welcome a trade, this is what he had to say. Uh, I mean, it just depends. I guess if it works for both sides, I, mean, I guess. I don't know. I've never been part of this before, so I don't know how it go. And this seems to line up with McColl's recent statement on social media. He made it on February 27th that said the Jets handled the trade on their own and he wasn't aware of it. Well, then we all know a week later on October 19th, it was announced that the Chiefs traded for McColl Hardman in exchange for a swap of late round picks. Upon McColl's arrival in KC last fall, McColl made it seem like he had no idea he was gonna be coming back to the Chiefs because he said this, quote, I got with my agents and they said, there's some talk they could possibly trade you. After that, that's when we just started waiting for the inevitable, seeing what would happen. They kept it low key, the teams that were interested in the mix. Uh, when I heard it was Kansas City, I was excited to get back here. So it really looks like McColl had no idea he was going to get traded to the Chiefs. And that's all she wrote. Or is it? Since the comments in the podcast seem to disagree with how things initially appeared to go down, the league could potentially investigate this. The one thing that they are going to do, as Joe Douglas said on Wednesday, is they are going to look into filing tampering charges because if Hardman did in fact reach out to the Chiefs and ask Veach and ask Mahomes to come get him, that is tampering and there can be discipline from the league in terms of draft compensation given to the Jets. The media even asked Jets GM Joe Douglas about this earlier this week, and here's what he had to say in response. I uh, look, those are, I'll just say those are comments that definitely resonated with us. And the way the GM uses the term resonates here, it implies that the comments McColl made were similar to what someone thinks or believes, which means he had a suspicion or he implies that he had a suspicion this could have happened, i.e. McColl talking with the Chiefs in some fashion without his knowledge prior to the trade happening. However, after all this, McColl Hardman himself went online this week to clarify some things, saying, I never had talks with KC before the trade, so we can clear that up. The Jets handled my trade on their own and did the right thing by sending me back to KC. So there you go. It's a big ol' nothing burger, right? Well, some aren't so sure. Nick Feria, I don't know how to say his last name, but he covers the Jets with Sports Illustrated and said this, Jets GM Joe Douglas could ask the league to investigate, and if Hardman's comments were treated as a source, the league could dock the Chiefs a draft pick in 2024 due to tampering charges. But my question is, will the league really find something here? What if, when McColl mentioned talking with Veach and Mahomes and telling them to come get him, it was on the field before or after the Chiefs and Jets game. What if that comment was simply a joke on the field? Like, yo, things suck over here. The grass is not greener. Come get me. And then Veach said absolutely nothing back. Is that enough for the league to classify that as tampering? How about new? No? Either way, it doesn't look the best here when the Chiefs did indeed end up trading for him roughly 19 days later. But let's just say McColl's online follow-up recently this week was the truth. That even though he said in that podcast he spoke with Mahomes and Veach to come and get him, no conversation was actually had prior to the trade. I know the Jets GM says McColl's comments resonated with them, with some in the Jets media community thinking he could ask the league to investigate it. But all this feels like a bit of a stretch to me. I mean, is it really that far-fetched to think Brett Veach could reach out to inquire about McColl Hardman prior to the trade deadline without McColl mentioning something to him previously? I mean, think about it. Use your brain for a half a second here. The Chiefs' current returner at the time, Richie James, was on IR, and they needed some wide receiver help. They knew McColl. They drafted him and used him as a receiver, obviously, but also as a returner plenty throughout the years. Plus, McColl already knew the system, and they also knew that the guy was just sitting there on the bench in New York. It was a win-win situation for Kansas City. They got him, and what do you know? He helped them win the freaking Super Bowl back-to-back -back champions. And though we will have to wait and see what happens, 
I think all of this, again, is a bit of a stretch. McColl may have misspoke slightly, but if he just mentioned that loosely to those guys, uh, I don't think there's anything here, especially if the Chiefs went through the proper channels of going through the Jets for the trade all the way. Now, if McColl really did hit Veach up and he did not report this, there is where some trouble could be had, but we'll have to wait and see. I really think this is hopefully a nothing burger. And I know some of you are probably wondering why I didn't talk about the validated belief from the Jets that wide receiver McCole Hardman frustrated by his lack of usage leaked game plans to opposing teams. That's because this is freaking idiotic. This was two of their best games last season. So you mean to tell me McCole Hardman leaked the plans and the Jets had a good game? Give me a freaking break. But hey, let me know what you guys think about all this in the comments down below. Do you think the Chiefs could indeed be potentially facing some repercussions here, or are the Jets grasping at straws, if that's the right phrase? Either way, let me know in the comments down below, and until next time, let's go, let's freaking go. How about those? Yeah.